I was a struggling ghostwriter and I thought a break away from the city to spend time at a remote ski resort would be a good way to clear my head and help me get back on my feet. There weren't any other cabins around so I was guaranteed a few weeks to reflect and enjoy the isolation. At least that was the case until the final week of my stay, which made this Christmas truly unforgettable. It first started at night when I suddenly woke up. Initially, I didn't know if it was from something I heard or from a bad dream, but either way, I felt compelled to look out the window which is when I noticed the snowman in the distance. Back when I was a kid, I would have been delighted at the mere sight of a snowman, but that sense of childhood nostalgia was soon silenced by the realization that I wasn't alone out there in the woods. The cabin where I was staying was the only one this side of the valley, so it seemed like a really long way to walk just to build a snowman. Despite the uncanny feeling, I was still far too tired to give it too much thought and managed to sleep through the rest of the night. The following morning, to no surprise, the snowman was still there. I couldn't quite put my finger on it right then, but I got this strange notion that something was different about the snowman. I decided to carry on about my day and didn't think much of it until later at night when it happened again. I woke up suddenly for no apparent reason. I don't remember having a bad dream, but I guess it's common not to remember the dreams that we have, even the really bad ones. It felt like deja vu and I found myself once again gazing through the bedroom window. I could still see the snowman, even clearer now. I couldn't quite figure out why, but it gave me this odd sensation. I also started to wonder why the snowman was facing towards the cabin and why anyone would build a snowman all the way out here. There weren't any other cabins around for miles. I didn't sleep all that much after that, so the next morning, I decided to head outside the cabin for a closer look. I looked around, but just as I expected, there was no trace of anyone, although it was hard to be sure, considering how poor the visibility was due to the weather. I chose to knock the snowman down, just for good measure, since it was already beginning to feel like some kind of bad omen. Maybe I was overreacting, it was just some kids fooling around, but at least I wouldn't have to think about it anymore. Or so I thought. The following night, things got even worse. I woke up again, but now I knew for sure it wasn't from a dream, but a loud thud, like the sound of something hitting the window. I glanced through the window and was shocked to see the same snowman, identical from the day before. I remember turning in quite late that night, and there was no sign of a snowman when I turned out the lights, so I was pretty sure that it wasn't a kid's prank. I mean, who would let their kids out this late to build a snowman? And what was that noise on the window? The last thing I wanted to do is go outside in the blistering cold, but I knew that if I waited until the morning, any footprints would most likely be covered by another thick layer of snow. I reluctantly got dressed, stepped outside and walked up to the snowman. Which is when I discovered a single set of very large footprints leading from and to the forest. I couldn't shake this feeling of being watched and that somehow I had made things worse by destroying the last snowman. So I decided to leave it alone and quickly headed back to the cabin. The bitter cold stayed with me that night as I curled up in bed and tried my best to get warm, but the prospect of getting any sleep that night soon came to an abrupt end. The noise on the glass. I recognized it instantly. The sound of a snowball hitting the window. I knew deep down that it could only mean one thing.
Needless to say, I didn't sleep a wink that night, and I left the cabin the very next day. I never knew his name, or ever saw his face, but I came to know him as the snowman.